Um, Lieutenant Harrington? Is he an imposter? Damn it! We are in the backstage area. Ooh, interesting. Let's talk to this guy. May I ask you a few questions? It all depends on what you're asking. What are you doing? My job, my lord. I'm making this jumble look a bit neater. Could you tell me what happened in Brazil? Yes, my lord. I was there when it happened. But Mr. Richards takes it very personally if we chat about those times. And I won't risk my position without some consideration, if you get my meaning. Here's five guineas. How's that? Oh, my lord, you're too kind. I don't really know much of what happened. You see, I was alone at a tavern that night, and I was, as one could say, very fond of the local alcohol. When I returned to our lodgings, I learned that the actress and the costumier had taken to their heels. And what did you do then? I made my way to the inn with all haste to learn what they'd taken in their sudden departure. You must understand my position. I was solely responsible for the security of the luggage and troop properties. Can you then imagine my surprise when I saw that nothing was missing? Absolutely nothing. They hadn't even taken their personal items. I can understand that of a man like Jeffreys, but it was most unusual for a lady such as Miss Veronica. So the idea came to me that perhaps they hadn't truly left, you see. And what of Dwight Richards? I learned that Mr Richards had been seized by the local authorities. It seemed he was under suspicion for the murder of the missing lovers. This was too incredible. And then there's another odd thing that weighs on my mind. When we finally returned to England, Mr Richards asked me to do him a small personal service. What was strange was that he insisted I keep the matter confidential and not read a word of it to anyone. What kind of service? Well, there's a small room with an iron door located above the backstage. It was used to store the stage lights and fireworks. He asked me to help him move all of Miss Veronica's personal belongings to the room. Every little thing, without exception. Her large trunk, her dresses, all of it. Where is this room? The end of the passage. But there is one difficulty. You see, Mr Richards has the only key to the room's iron door because only he has a complete set of keys to this building. Where is this room? Yes. Goodbye, my friend. My respects, my lord. She is fabulous, isn't she? Do you have a complete set of keys to the theatre? Oh, yes. Take them. But you will see to their safe return. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, sir. Go then. Uh, that way. Uh, I wonder how long this game is going to go on for. Watson, stay there and inform me if Richards arrives. All right, Holmes. Thank you for forever being my lookout, Watson. <laughs> Let us see whether we can find other evidence.
a gift from the gods. That is of no use to me. I have no interest in this. Nothing of any interest here. Well, then that's it. What else can I tell you? Goodbye, miss, and thanks. You're welcome, Mr. Holmes. Um, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have a box in my inventory and it's not in there. Yes, 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 whatever. What? All right, home. I need something. Okay, maybe I'm not supposed to have a box in my inventory then. Oops, I nice got that. Nice made of encrusted nacre. What does it mean? Hmm. This lock has never been forced. I see. To open the safe, I must have the two other earrings. Yeah, see? Okay. Now let's go back and do that all again, shall we? I should show her one of my hints. The silver earring, obviously. <gasps> oh, my stars! Would you mind lending me your earring? I shall give it back to you in a few moments. Certainly. Maybe you would like to borrow Doris's earring as well. I don't believe she would give it to you, but to me, certainly. If you wait here, I will get it for you. Thank you! Watson, stay there and inform me if Richards arrives. All right, Holmes. Okay, we'll 
this one goes here. This one goes here. This one goes here. It is elementary. There. Richards and Miss Davenport standing in front of the old Fairfax Theatre. But who is this third man? Jeffries. Descriptions of exotic landscapes. Nothing of interest. Well, well, gentlemen, you arrive at precisely the right moment. Is your good mood what? a sign that you have found something of interest? Absolutely, Holmes. It seems to me I caught the right end this time. What? Really? We learned about it only by chance. It appears that at one o'clock this morning, Grimble arranged for his solicitors to send his demands to the court for the appropriation of Bromsby Enterprises. My men will spare nothing in their search for the elusive Grimble. Lestrade, pray continue. Then I followed your advice and we advanced further into our investigation of Mr. Richards. Did you know that his true name is Gaetano Riccardino? As this, Mr. Riccardino, at age 19, he was sentenced to two years imprisonment for armed robbery of a fair store. And who would you think the complainant was in this case? In truth, a certain Melvin Bromsby. This new evidence of his criminal past makes him another principal suspect in these murders. Very interesting. Any other findings? It would seem that Grimble and Richards are old associates. They were both intimately involved in the sale and transfer of the Fairfax Theatre. These two make quite a pair, don't you agree? Well, Lestrade, I'll keep my thoughts on these matters secret for the moment. Bah, you're not playing according to Hoyle. Really, Holmes, you must at least tell me your opinions on Richards. Mr. Richards is an intelligent person. He is a man of great personal resources. If I had the power of Scotland Yard at my disposal, I would take all steps necessary to ensure that Mr. Richards is secure within a prison cell. And the sooner the better for all concerned. When the case involves murder, it is not wise to underestimate any possibilities. You are a good man, Holmes. I swear upon my name that within the space of an hour, our friend Mr. Richards will be warming a cold cell at Dartmoor. Very well, my friend. By the way, I would like to see you tomorrow at Sheringford Hall to discuss in greater detail some of the more puzzling elements of this case. Can I expect you? I would not miss it for the world. This is most fortuitous as Miss Bromsby also invited me to the hall. I was told they had good news to share and it seems to me an engagement announcement must be at hand. Oh so, god, they've known each tomorrow. other like five Let's days. If that. They're engaged already? Well, Damn it. is Lestrade right? This case does seem resolved. There is but one piece missing that I need to complete this puzzle. Oh, it's well, not very loss. important from the criminal point of view, but from the economic aspects of this case, it is essential. Regarding the question of whether Lestrade is correct, I will give you two items that should provide the answer that you seek. The first is a table representing the shoe sizes of the main characters in this case. Examine it carefully, Watson. A parcel for you, Mr. Holmes. Ah, this would be Mycroft. Here is the final piece, which completes our puzzle, Watson. Would this be the second element? What second element? You have just said that in order to determine if Lestrade is correct, I would need to consider two items. You told me about the shoe sizes, and I ask if this news article is the second clue. Oh, no account. The second clue is a question, a very simple question. The answer will take the grass under the feet of several English citizens. For if they cannot even guess the answer to this question, they are for the gallows. The question is as follows. Watson, do you think that Horace Fowler slept with a cushion? It seems to me that we have gathered all of the key elements, Watson. However, before we retire, let's summarize our findings. The question should be answered yes or no and justified by the evidence or what? testimony received during the investigation. Um, hold on a minute. Early in the morning. The lifeless body of Mr. Raymond Waters, a well-known engineer, was found in a lane in the market district. At an early point in the investigation, it was found that a brawl was the cause of his unfortunate demise. The date of his funeral services has not yet been announced. Des de separate message. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that you would take it all back. 
Everything cannot be finished between us. Let us meet tonight, I beg you. All the men have shoe sizes approximately seven except the fellow. So Bromsby and Johansson have ten. Lamb and Lieutenant Parrington have nine. Colonel Patterson and Horace Fallot have six. And Miss Bromsby and Miss Lambert have four. That says all the men have shoe sizes approximately seven. There are two women underneath. It explains everything. Okay. Are there several sets of keys for the Aston Theatre? Um, yes, because, um, Bruce Aston gave us one. Bruce Aston, where you be? Duh. Did one of the actresses of the red-headed wig? Yes, that was... This one, Miss Sullivan. Could the discovery in the dressing room be connected to the case? Yes. Um. Well, dressing room costume, and then there was a button in the kitchen. Uh. Could the writing on the message to Veronica Davenport be found elsewhere? Yeah, that's been on things that we found. French visit card. French visit card. Anything written on me? Let me antique to you. It is simplicity itself, Watson. We have answered all the questions. Congratulations, you have successfully completed your investigation. The following questions are optional and you do not have to answer them correctly to reach the last step of the game. Who... Who killed Sabra? I don't know. Lieutenant Harrington? Personally... <sighs> yeah. Harrington. Duh. Um... Who killed Fowler? Gim Grimble. Grimble killed Fowler, right? Who killed Johansson? Who killed Veronica Davenport? Who killed Jeffries? Who killed Hunter? You did not answer correctly! Do you want to proceed to the final movie anyway? Yes. Because I'm bad at this. Let's see. 